What's up people, Ben Samulak TV here, and I am going to do an overview on the book of Revelation. Many people know Revelation is in the Bible. It's actually the last book in the whole Bible. There's the Old Testament with 39 books. The New Testament has 27 books. It's the last book in the Bible. This, bo this book was written by John, the Apostle John, not John the Baptist, um, who was Jesus' relative. This is one of the 12 disciples that was with, who, lived, who was with Jesus, and he, became, and he was an apostle. So this is the Apostle John. Um, the Apostle John, when he, in about 80, uh, 80 uh, A.D., after Christ's death, in about 90 A.D., after Christ's death, um, uh, John was exiled by uh, one of the Roman emperors to an island um, near Greece called Patmos. So it's a, it's a small island in the Aegean Sea. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's where he was exiled. He was sent there because he was a Christian. And while on that island, he was about, people say, about 90-some years old, he had a revelation from God. So that's what this book is about. This book is about the revelation that John had while on that island. And this uh, revelation he put in, he wrote down, and this is what we have today. So when you're reading this book, a lot of people don't even read it. They hear about it, um, and they just hear a lot of crazy stuff about it but I'm gonna t I'm gonna just kind of tell you uh, a little bit about what it's about so you'll realize it's actually not that crazy it's um, you know when I break it down for you you're gonna probably understand it a little bit better hopefully so what what this is talking about the first three chapters um, I'm gonna go very fast just give you an overview the first three ta chapters is this um, it starts off with John having this revelation um, he starts off by seeing the seven churches in Asia, which is modern-day Turkey today. Um, and so, in this area, uh, in uh, it was called uh, it was called Asia Minor at that time, or just Asia, which is Turkey. Actually, it's not Asia, the real Asia today. In that area, there were seven churches. So, the first part of the Revelation, he sees these seven lampstands. And among these lampstands, he sees pretty much it's Jesus walking among the lampstands. And once once you keep reading, you you realize that these lampstands are these seven churches. And these seven churches, um, this revelation is supposed to go to these seven churches. Each church he talks about, there's certain things that they are doing very well, and some things that they need work on um, that they're doing that the Lord's not happy with. And he tells them to to stay strong, to do what he, they're supposed to, or else the Lord will take their lampstand away, pretty much. So that was part the first part of the revelation. And they all got, if they all overcame, they did what they're supposed to, then they would get a, re, a certain kind of reward. There was only one church that was pretty much had nothing wrong, and that was Philadelphia. Um, and that one also had a reward as well if they continued to do what they were supposed to. So after the first three chapters where we're looking at these seven churches, we look at Jesus we then go to the, uh, now the scenes in heaven. Um, so there's these uh, different things happening in heaven. Um, so that's why you're going to start to see some interesting things about like these different creatures throwing their crowns down. Um, this scene's in heaven. So that's why it's, uh, it's an interesting scene that's going on at that point. Um, then in this same uh, scene, there's this one. There's a seal, I mean a scroll. A scroll is like, you know, a piece of paper that's rolled up that's a scroll. And it had seven seals on it. Like the seals, like the kings would like seal uh, something with their seal. And it was it would be closed. It would seal that, that scroll or that letter. There were seven of those seals on that scroll. And John couldn't open the seal. So he was like really sad. So then we find out that Jesus was able to open the seals. That's what now, now in Revelation we start to see different seals opening. Each seal is now an event happening or a certain thing. So the first four seals that are open, these are what we know the four horses of the apocalypse. Each horse is a different color. Um, at least the last three, we know that this is like death, war, and famine. And the first one's white. Um, we're not sure. I'm not sure if it really tells you what exactly that is. Um, I'm not really interpreting anything. I'm just going to tell you the facts of this book. Okay. So these first four seals are the four horses of the apocalypse. Um, they are open. And then each seal after that, there's these different kind of events happening, different kind of things happening. So as you are reading this book, that's why it's a revelation as well. So some stuff you're like, whoa, what is this? It's kind of weird. Um, some of the things, when you look at the other part of the Bible, we can realize that these are actual prophecies that are coming to happen now. They're actually going to be end time events because they match up with things that we know from the Old Testament were also prophesied to happen. That's why we know some of these events are actually the real things that are going to happen in the end times. But when you're reading about some of these other things like 
locusts that have crowns and like lion's mouth faces like men, lion's mouth teeth, scorpion tails, like some stuff like that. Um, those are some things that you know people try to interpret. Um, I'm not sure, so I'm not going to talk about that. But that's when when the seal, some of these seals are open. You know, some of these things are happening. You're like, wow, this is pretty crazy. But what's happening is um, we look at this is this is from prophecy. It's the last seven years um, when we're looking at part of Revelation. It's telling you about the last seven years of human history. Um, and so the first three and a half years is the first four uh, first. I would say six seals, okay? So the first six seals that are being opened, we're still looking at the first three and a half years of the final years of human history um, before before the Lord comes back, you could say, before Jesus returns. That's what Revelations I'm going to tell you about. So the first three and a half years, you're getting these seals are opening. Uh, you have the four horse of the apocalypse. You have some other calamities happening. And then you will have, it talks about a man being alive, a, a world leader who is pretty much you know has he has some power but he's still not that powerful yet he's a world leader and everyone looks to him as someone who's very very uh powerful and capable and they all love this guy so the first three and a half years though he's not really you know doing his thing yet um by the so once the seventh seal comes within the seventh seal now there's seven trumpets each trumpet as we go along with the story also, different events are happening, different calamities are happening, different crazy things are happening during the last three and a half years. So, because the first three and a half years um, is the first six seals being opened out of the seven. The seventh seal, and now it's going to be the next part of three and a half years. Before the next part of three and a half years, we see that some Christians are, some people are taken up, raptured. They're taken out of what's going to be the great tribulation the last three and a half years so some people are taken out and the antichrist the beast he's actually not even called the antichrist this world leader gets killed and he comes back to life and at that time the next three and a half years starts he breaks the pact with israel because he had a pact with israel and then you can start to see this is the last three and a half years okay this is the last three and a half years of human history at that point some some people have left according to what, what uh, Revelation shows. Um, so some people will escape these last three and a half years. And in these last three and a half years now, we see trumpets being blown. And each trumpet, you know. Um, but the very interesting thing. So this guy who resuscitates, this world leader, he, he's called the Beast. That's who we all know as the Antichrist. He starts to now have pretty much very, very strong power. Um, and what's this is some things that a lot of people don't talk about. When I read this, I thought this is real crazy. Satan gets cast down to the earth at this time for the last three and a half years. Satan comes down as a fallen angel. He's coming to the earth, and he's he uh, he aligns himself with the Antichrist. There's also the false prophet, and there's also the image of the beast. So the image of the beast. This is pretty crazy too, because so this last three and a half years now. Um, now the beast, because he's resuscitated, he's starting to have really, really strong power. He has the, the, the devil, actually, Satan, in his corner and the false prophet telling people you need to worship the beast. He starts to want people to worship him. He starts to become, like, pretty much lifts himself up as God. And so at that point, the last three and a half years, you have to. T that's when the mark of the beast comes in, the 666 thing. Um, the beast pretty much becomes so bold that he says, hey, you know, and the, and the false prophet... You know, they all, and the, and the devil, they all pretty much tell people, you need to worship this guy. And you need to take his mark. It's a mark on your hand or forehead, whatever that is. But it, but at that time, you will know it is the mark of the beast if you take it. then And if you don't take it, you can't buy or sell anything, it says. So, you know, at that time, it's going to be pretty much, you're going to have to take it or you're going to be an outcast. And um, if you don't bow down to the statue, it says, you'll be killed. The the statue, the image of the beast actually can spit fire. It can talk. It can, like, it's pretty... It's going to be pretty, you know, amazing to people. So this last three and a half years, and there's a lot of, you know, supernatural calamities. There will be the two witnesses. These two witnesses at that time, because like a lot of people will be gone who believed in God. So these two witnesses will be there to try to tell people, repent, repent. This is the last time you need to, you know, don't take the mark. You need to like not uh, align yourself with this guy. Um, and eventually they kill them and they're, they're you know, they're dead. And everyone's like, woohoo, they're partying because these two guys were like telling them not to follow the beast. And they felt like all these bad things that were happening because each trumpet is bringing all these miserable things to them and if you read it you'll you can see what those things are yourself but each trumpet brings a, a, a hard thing a, a bad event you know something crazy comes 
um, to get people to turn back to God, to get people to repent, to get people to realize that they need to, you know, not not follow the beast, not follow the false prophet, not follow the devil. Um, so, so these trumpets are blowing. Um, then these two witnesses, you know, they get they they kind of get back up. God resuscitates them and, and calls them to heaven. So now it's getting towards the end of the last three and a half years. And the beast and you know the false prophet, they have people trying to you know trying to get people to worship them. They're killing people. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening. So towards the last end of the last three and a half years, they get all the you know there's different wars I think that take place. But this is one of the big ones that everyone knows about. It's called Armageddon. It's at the end of the seven years, the second part of the last three and a half years. Um, so at the end of the seven years, he gets all these nations together. And the false prophet, the beast, the, uh, Satan, they all come and they go, they surround Jerusalem, which, you know, in the Bible, this is God's people. They surround Jerusalem and they're going to attack Jerusalem. And at that time, Jesus actually comes down on a white horse, wipes out this, the army, and it says there's blood up to the bridle of the horses, or at least, you know, I mean, at that war, or, or in that war, there's different wars. So either that's the one where the the, the blood's up to the bridle, or that's when the birds, they say, come, come, birds from heaven, to eat these generals' flesh, and these important people come and eat all their flesh because they're all going to be wiped out. So there's this war, and they get wiped out. The Jews at that time see Jesus come down, and a lot of them believe in Jesus at that time um, when he comes down to save them from the Antichrist. So it's a big, it's a huge miracle, and the Jews in Jerusalem see this, and they're like, wow, this is Jesus. This is the one we crucified, and a lot of them believe into Jesus. The Antichrist is thrown into the lake of fire alive forever, and the beast, and the, uh, I mean the beast, and the false prophet, and this is interesting. Satan at that time is not thrown in the lake of fire. It says he's chained and put into the abyss, and he's locked up for a thousand years. So at that time, he's locked up for a thousand years. Um, you know, we just had this huge war, everything, you know, the end of seven years is up and now there's a thousand year period at that time. Now this is very interesting because it doesn't talk much about this thousand years where the devil's locked up. Some people are with the Lord in heaven and then it just, and a lot of people are still dead at that time. All the dead stay dead. They're not raised up, you know, and not all of them. Some of them may be, some may not, but there are definitely some dead that stay dead. There's some people with God for a thousand years, probably partying or some kind of party because they did what they're supposed to, some kind of reward time. And then there's still people on the earth because after the thousand years, the devil's released. And I'm just telling you what the book says, okay? The devil's released from the abyss. And one last time he goes, it says, to the nations who are still on the earth. And he, he tricks them. He subdues them. He seduces them. God gives... Satan one last chance and man one last chance to choose I guess and they choose Satan to follow Satan the devil so he gets one last war this is the war of Gog and Magog this is after the thousand years you know um, and at that time um, you know he gathers all these people together Satan Lucifer the Satan whatever the devil the fallen angel the devil he gathers all these people together, and they're going to try to go against God, okay? They're going to try to war against God with Satan leading them. And it says at this time, this is towards the end of Revelation, that now comes down Jesus, but this time with the bride. The bride of Christ comes down with him. And they come down, and they destroy the enemy. They destroy those who rebel against God. They destroy Satan. This time, Satan is thrown into the lake of fire forever. Now he goes to join the false prophet, the beast. He joins those ones, and they're in there for forever at that point. Now Satan's, that's his destiny, the lake of fire after that. Um, and then there it says that there's a new heaven and a new earth, and that the, the bride comes down out of heaven, but it says also the new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven. So the bride and the new city, the new Jerusalem is, is the same. The city and the bride, Christ's bride, comes down. And now this bride of Christ sets up, and Christ sets his kingdom up on earth. The new earth, and there's a new heaven and a new earth. Why is there a new earth? Because Christ is going to bring, he says the new Jerusalem comes out of heaven to earth. And that's where he sets up his kingdom. And those who are who are God's children, who's got Christ's brides, will, it says they'll reign with Christ. It says the spirit and the bride say come. So now there's two entities there together ruling on the earth in the Jerusalem because there will be a new Jerusalem and the Lord did promise the Jews I will give you this land forever so I really believe in Jerusalem according to the Bible some that they come new Jerusalem comes down and and you know God and his people that you know will rule the Old Testament Jews and the New Testament Christians will rule in Jerusalem 
in the New Jerusalem, and there's a lot of things that talks about what it's going to look like. But we do know that Christ will be the king on this earth, and those who are his children, his bride, and his people will will be with him, ruling with him. And then there's the nations. So, but so we don't know what you know. The nations it says will stay alive by eating the tree of of life. So there will be other people there. It's you know it's the, this is what Revelation says. I'm not going to go much more into it. That's just all it says about it. But then there will be the great white throne after that thousand years when Satan, not just only Satan, thrown into the lake of fire. Everybody at that point is raised from the dead and has to stand before God in the great white throne. And at that point, the revelation says that you'll be judged by your works. So um, I don't know, you know, exactly the interpretation of that, but I do believe this is my own thing. I'll put in there is if you believe in Jesus and your judge, your works will be you, you. There's no good person it says. So if you're just standing with your works, you'll be guilty. You'll be sent to to be punished. Okay. Um, for sure it said that anybody followed this says whoever followed the devil and the beast and the Christ willingly will go to the lake of fire with them. Um, everybody else will be judged. If you're not written in the book of life, then you won't be then then you'll be judged, okay? Um, so that's what it says. And everyone who's written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be saved. Um, so and that's kind of the end of the, the, the revelation. And then like it says, the spirit and the bride say, Come, let whom who thirst come. Um, let everybody who wills come drink freely the river of water of life. That's kind of where the revelation ends off with. So it's it's a call to come. Come to Jesus. Come to God. Come to the Lord. Come to be part of his plan for us for eternity. You know, like that's why he came. That's why he did all this because he has something special for man. A special position where man can reign with God in the end times for eternity. Um, but that's kind of what Revelation's about. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that was fast. I'll see. But thanks for watching, and I hope they gave you uh, some help on understanding the book of Revelation. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.